Hey, this is Jeff. You're watching Jeru Camping Adventures. Today I'm going to take this Honda generator and convert it so it runs on propane. All right, so uh, first step is to unbox everything. This is the Honda EU 2200i generator. This is a propane conversion kit by uh, Grenergy. Quick connect for your, your propane line. Instructions, we saw that before. This regulator, conduit. They give you a spark plug, the necessary bolts and supplies to do the whole conversion. The tool list includes some masking tape, a black marker, super glue, flashlight, a razor blade, a 5 8 wrench and adjustable crescent wrench, some pliers, side cutters and nippers. You need a 2 and 1 8 inch circular hole saw and step drill bit. You're going to need your ratchet wrench uh, with a quarter inch and 3 8 inch extension. On that, you'll need an 8 millimeter and 10 millimeter socket. You'll also need a spark plug socket and some flathead and Phillips head screwdrivers. Hot glue and a drill. My unit is new, so I'm not going to be using any carb cleaner or air compressor to clean out the generator since it hasn't been used yet. Okay, the first step is to remove the cover. On this next step, we're going to take some tape and line it up with the inner rib of the air box, stretching it over the red container. So here's the outer rib, and then this is the inner rib here. What you're concerned about up here is lining it up here to get this top. All right, so that tape, you're going to want to take the washers off the quick connect and one's going to go on top, one's going to go on the bottom, but you need to make sure you line up the washer according to the instructions. And that's the general idea. You're going to have tape going up the rib box and you're going to want to line up your washer right on the edge of the tape. You also want to make sure this is one quarter inch away from the edge. So let's measure that. Okay. All right, right here, I'm going to make sure that I'm a quarter inch away from the edge here. And the inner circle of the washer is lined up just with the green. You don't want any tape showing and you don't want it to be too much red. You want to get it right at the edge, quarter inch here right on there, and then make your dot right in the middle. And that's where you're going to drill. All right, in this step, we're going to remove the air box assembly. So let's take that tape off. We don't need it. We're going to remove this air filter. And there's one bolt that we have to remove from inside the air box. That's going to use an 8 millimeter. Ah, much better. The next step is to remove both 8 millimeter bolts on the carburetor. There's one here, there's one here. Now what we want to do is inspect the carb to air box gasket, check for damage and you're able to reuse it if there's uh, nothing wrong with it. So carefully take off this whole assembly.
All right, so now carefully pull out the carburetor assembly and inspect the gasket behind the carb. So this is the first one that we're going to look at here. This is brand new factory installed. So I'm not even going to change this one. Go ahead and inspect this gasket. Since this is brand new, we're just going to continue using it. All right, the next step, if you have a used generator, is to drain the lines. You gotta get the gasoline out of the lines. But in this case, this one's brand new, so I don't have a process to show you, but uh, read the owner's manual, and I'm sure it'll uh, walk you through some steps. What we're gonna do next is remove the two eight millimeter screws, bolts. One is there, and one is here. And make sure you remember which way this carb spacer plate goes. It only goes in one way, but make sure you put it back the same way. What we want to do now is check the condition of the carb spacer plate uh, gasket behind it. In this case, it looks good. Uh, again, this is a new unit, so it's not used yet, and we're going to reuse it. In this next step, you need to replace the bolts that are factory bolts with the bolts that came with the kit. So these are slightly longer. And you're just going to swap those out and put in the bolts that came with the Grenergy kit. For now, we'll just put the screws on to hold it in place. All right, we also have these Honda 8 millimeter factory bolts here. And we're going to replace these with uh, 10 millimeter bolts that came with the Grenergy kit. And there's a tip in the kit to put a dab of super glue on the end of both of these. Not Loctite, do not use Loctite. Gorilla Glue, super glue gel. Uh, it's got a little tip on the inside. Oh, wait, make sure you shake it. This next step, you're going to need to put the plastic spacer back. I took the gasket off and I already lined it up. I'm going to put this in. And I'm going to take these bolts with a dab of super glow and stick that in there. Use this 10 millimeter socket to tighten everything down. The instructions say to tighten by hand. Now it says to carefully tighten one quarter turn. In this next step, we're going to put the carb back over the plastic spacer. If the gasket was not reusable, make sure you use the new one that comes with the Grenergy kit. So this was the orientation before. I'm going to slide this on the same way. And then we're going to put the carb on. Make sure it doesn't get caught up on anything. You got all this stuff nicely tucked away. The next step involves drilling into the top of the case. So to protect the inside, we're going to put some paper towel in here so the plastic shavings don't fall into the motor. I'll use some tape to hold it in place. All right, in this step, we're going to drill a hole in the top as a pilot hole, and then we'll use the step drill bit to go 9 16 and watch out this is very important that you measure this correctly earlier because the gas tank is under here and you don't want to hit it so right here there's nothing just go straight down well 
We'll take this step drill bit. I ended up drawing a line on mine at the mark so I know where to stop. So this is going to go through, make a nice hole, and then stop at 9 16 Okay, now uh, we got the hole, but we're going to clean the inside with a, with a shaving. All right, this next step, we are going to take the hose that came with the Grenergy kit. You got to put one washer on it, and you're going to feed it behind these two fuel lines up through that hole you just drilled. Now for better organization, the instructions say to unhook this top fuel line and we're going to put a protective covering around it, conduit, and then we're going to zip tie it back. Also on this top one, make sure you turn it sideways. They want you to zip tie to this loop here. Cover the second fuel line. And then put this one inside. Take the zip tie that came with the kit and zip tie into this loop. On the next step, we're going to hook up the quick connect on the top with the hose that we just put in. Now the instructions say to turn this by hand. I found the easiest way to do that is to actually bring it to the edge of the table and then that way you can just get underneath and twist it as you put the top on. You're going to need your washer just like before. You have a washer on the bottom. This washer goes on top. The orientation of this, make sure it's facing that way and you can move it by hand after it's tight. All right, for this next step, it calls for a 5 8 inch wrench. This one will be for the bottom. And then we're going to grab uh, pliers for the top and make sure that as we tighten, this orientation remains parallel with the unit. It's pretty tight and you want to tighten it a little bit more so the hose naturally has a J curve going this way. Now we have to take this propane line with the fuel adapter, put it over the gasket. Slip behind these fuel lines that are already there. These just pull out. Just make sure you remember the order. The double is on the right side and this single goes out the left. Then you can just run behind it. So we need to put some plastic sleeve conduit because this is going to run in front of the oil cap and it'll prevent some damage. All right, so put this in the back, put these tubes back, all three of them. All right, this is the gasket that came with the Grenergy kit. If uh, the other gasket was bad, make sure you replace it, but this is a new unit, so I left that one on there. And then this one needs to match up, so just make sure you put it in the right orientation. A gasket on each side of the fuel adapter. This air box will slide over what we just installed, so don't be afraid to give it some force. And that fuel line in the back, if you look underneath, you'll see that it, there's a little pocket for it up there, then everything slips on better. To avoid that coming off, I'm going to temporarily put these screws on. Nuts, I mean, not screws. All right, so now you want to be able to reach your hand behind this little spot right in here because you got to get this bolt inside and you need this spacer on the back. Put the washer on first. 
get it started a little bit. Maybe wedge it in your fingers like this and then slip this behind. Start to hand tighten it. Get your eight millimeter and tighten this bolt. Get them all started about evenly. So you got one, two, and then three. These bolts are 10 millimeters. Remember this is a plastic casing, so make sure you don't over tighten it. Should be as tight as it was when you pulled it off. All right, that's good. And that's good. Let's go back to this air housing cover bolt, eight millimeter, same concept. You don't want to tighten too much. All right, make sure you put the PVC tubing back in this hole and you want to put the filter air box back in. Next, you want to put the air box cover back together. All right, let's get the covers off. We're gonna drill a hole in the spark plug cover. It says slightly above center. So slightly above center is right around here. Let's add a layer. Definitely find something that's circular. So that way when you're drilling, you can go right through. And watch your hands. Woo, let's do take two. Make your edge nice and clean. The goal is that you're trying to slip the, the vent cover in. So as long as the vent cover goes in, you're good. Okay, check this out. Similar concept to before. We're gonna mark the back and then we're gonna drill a pilot hole and then we're gonna use the hole saw and make another vent. So in this case, the instructions say to use this part right here. I'm just gonna mark it for now. It says to use a little snip And then we try to pull this out here. From the instructions, it looks way easier to drill if there's nothing in the way. This right here is gonna be your pilot hole right there. All right, same as before, more safety this time. That other thing flew way over there. Did you guys see that? This one's bigger, so I should have something to hold on to. So we'll take it, we'll clean it. You gotta make sure you do a good job. If you're gonna spend this much money on a generator, you might as well make it look good when you cut holes in it and destroy it. That's what I always say. I did have a Furman generator for our first trip that we took for summer. That was uh, the last two months. We just got back a couple weeks ago. That was cool. We went all the way up the West Coast to Montana, Yellowstone, all the way up there. And then we came all the way back. And at first we had a generator, but then it died. I broke it in. I did all the right stuff. And uh, it just wasn't meant to be. We are going to super glue these, or hot glue, I should say, this cap inside each hole we did. Now, there are little tabs on here. Get each one open a little bit, and then when you stick it inside the hole, those metal clips should catch the side. Okay, guys, uh, I'm back. You, you know your hot glue's ready, you can smell it. It smells, but it's also dripping out. First, you want to pry open these tabs. Pry each one open. I'm 
I'm going to push it in and now it's stuck. See that? Those clips are in there and then we can take the hot glue and we can glue it. So let's do the same with this one. We'll snap it in place. Now it's in there and then we should be able to hot glue this. I'm no hot glue expert, but uh, it can't be that hard. Also, I'm, I got this sweet pink hot glue gun. It does just as good as any other color. It's actually my wife's, Andrea's. If we spin this, it should cause, oh, look at that. It'll work the glue in a little bit, I think, huh? All right, we'll set that one. That one's ready to go, huh? Oh, a tip too, use a, use a cardboard because if you use a cardboard, then you don't get your table messy. I'm just loading it up. So just put as much as you want. All right, watch the strings. Same as before, I think we should, we should twist it a little bit. Oh, it's pretty tight. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. There we go. I think that's good. Hey there, uh, we have the generator back on the table. This is brand new, never run. So I need to put oil in it. And I also need to put this spark plug. The kit came with a spark plug. It's already pre-gapped. So it says, please use new pre-gap spark plug. That's what we're gonna do. So first step is to remove the current spark plug that came with the unit. I'll just set that aside and save it for later. We're gonna use our spark plug socket and we'll get this off. Let's see if that came out. There we go. Open this new one. And let's put that in. So hand tighten this. And now we will tighten it with a spark plug socket. It says for new spark plugs in the manual, the Honda manual, if you're installing a new spark plug, tighten one half turn after it has been seated. That's a, we'll call that a quarter. We'll ratchet back. Oh, that's pretty tight. Here's half. We'll go a little bit more. That's about eight, nine pounds, right? You need to put the spark plug cover back on so it fires and it should snap, you should hear it. And now we can put on our maintenance cover. We got the new maintenance cover. Let's put that on. And that's it, spark plug is done. Hey there, over here. Uh, as I said a couple times, this is a new unit. It does not ship with oil. So we gotta put oil in and it holds up to 14 ounces of oil, which we will stick in this hole. And we'll use a nice funnel to make sure we don't make a mess. So let's get this cap off. There we go. Let's not make a mess in this brand new generator. That would not be good. Do not overfill. Overfilled oil makes a mess. It's really hard to clean. Now, a secret to put the cap on is to tilt this back. We'll put the cap on. All right, let's put this case on. And that should be the last thing we need to do to the side. There is a Phillips screwdriver, so let's get that nice and tight. All right, there we go. Okay, guys, this next step involves replacing the factory sticker with this cool new sticker. You'll notice there's a gasoline and a new propane and natural gas option and then engine off. So uh, I'm gonna peel this off and then put this one on. What I, what I think you should do first is probably mark with a pencil where the current sticker is, and then that way you can line up the new sticker right in the same spot. Uh, let's make sure that we mark where some of these are first. Now we'll go to fuel off. And then engine switch all the way on is up here. 
we'll use pencils so that way we can erase it later. Let's try a, a putty knife. Okay, let's get this sticker on. Make sure that the spots line up with my pencil marks. I'm gonna clean my hands off just in case they have some stuff. Who? You know, Justin, that guy. Hey, that's for you, uh, babe. So this is good. We have the conversion done. The work done was a top quick connect for the propane conversion, a modification to the side panel. There's a modification to the top. So we're gonna take this outside because I can't test it in the garage. We're gonna carry all the lights and everything. We're gonna start again in the morning. So uh, I'll see you in a little bit. Here we go. We're setting up everything. Getting ready to film today's activities. This should be fun. Hey guys, so it's the next day. All the manual says is to uh, make sure you run it on gas mode and run gas out of the carburetor. And then after that, we'll do the propane. It's pretty sturdy. I think we're good. All right. I don't think there's any gas in there for sure. Let's make sure we're, we're ready to go for propane. So we're gonna make sure everything's off as if we're starting from fresh. Choke is off, vent cap needs to be off as well. Make sure eco mode is off. Make sure you do not have loads plugged in. This needs to mount up. It says mount up. And in the instructions, it actually says to take this blue cap and, and use it as a rest. And then your cap, just like that. You guys see that? We got the cap for the quick connect taken off. Make sure those go back on when you're done. Keep the dirt and everything up. We're gonna take this one off. Can you see this button here? You push that three times slowly, one, two, three, and that primes the propane into the line and into the generator. There's a couple other things on here that, that I'm not gonna bother adjusting right now, but there's some screws up here. You're able to uh, tweak for different low and high pressure situations just in case you're not, uh, your engine is not operating correctly. There's instructions in the book. They tell you what uh, pressures to set to. Uh, if you have any questions, just contact support. <clears throat> We're gonna turn the tank on. Oh, I heard a okay. Listen for three primes. Oh, I hear it. One, two, three. Make sure you are in propane mode on the dial. Now it says to pull this cord three times to help it. So let's do that a little bit. And here we go. Ooh, it's closer. So that pulled on the third pole, maybe the second. This is so cool, you guys. This is so awesome. It's great when things work the first time. That's the best, that's the best. First, let's turn this off so we can talk. The proper way to turn off a generator, any generator, gas or propane, is to turn off the gas source. That way you run out the lines of gasoline or propane in the car. So let's turn off at the tank and the generator should run dry. Perfect, I consider that a successful test. So if you were done, you'd make sure it's off and now you're set. You don't have to worry about choke. Propane doesn't need choke. 
Hey guys, all right, I'm back. So we have successfully converted the generator. We just did a test and now uh, I'm gonna actually break in the generator. This thing's new. If you've been watching the, the video from the beginning, brand new generator, so I gotta break it in under half load for five or six hours. Booyah! If you enjoyed watching this and want to see more from Jeru Camping Adventures, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel and comment below. Bye guys.